Getting a job in bioinformatics in the age of big data requires more advanced technical skills than it used to. On today's video, we're going to be briefly overviewing what is Nextflow, how do you get started, why do you need to know it, and a basic kind of brief overview of why we need Nextflow in the first place. So if you want to learn more about the most lucrative skill in bioinformatics, stay tuned on this episode of Genomics with Georgia. If you're new here, welcome. Hi everyone, my name is Georgia and I'm a bioinformatician. I've been working in the field for over four years now and I've gone from knowing what pipelines are to actually being able to build my own. If you like this kind of content about introductions to bioinformatics, make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's get into today's video. If you look at most job adverts now for roles in bioinformatics, most of them are asking for next flow. You really need to know what this is, how to use it, and what are the benefits of using Nextflow. But before we get into Nextflow itself, let's have an introduction on pipelines themselves so you can understand why it's important to be learning this skill. If you think back to 10 years ago, if you had an experiment, the lab would do an experiment, create some data, get it sequenced, and then you'd analyze those sequence outputs. And that's fine, right? Because you can write a script, you can analyze your sample, get some result out, and great, you've analyzed some data. But the problem is now, we're creating so much data. There's not just one sample, there might be a hundred samples, they might have multi-regional sampling, there might be other samples in external cohorts you want to get into your environment and run with your hundreds of samples that you have on site. Basically, there's too much data to be doing things ad hoc now in bioinformatics. And if you want to be a bioinformatician, you have to be able to build scalable, robust pipelines to process these huge volumes of data. I'm saying pipelines, I'm saying processing data, so let's kind of visualize this a bit better. A really great resource to look at kind of best practices for pipelines is the GATK Best Practices Workflow. If you head over to the GATK website, which stands for the Genome Analysis Toolkit, not only do they have tools that are used for next generation sequencing analysis or NGS analysis, they also have some really helpful diagrams there and also some best practices workflows. So you can see the steps that kind of go into the best way of analysing a certain data type. So for example, if we go to their getting started page and then we have a look, you can see that there are best practices workflows, tutorials and then computing platforms. So if we go ahead and click on the best practices workflows, you can see some examples of some common workflows that you could do. So first of all, let's click on data pre-processing workflows and we can see here a kind of a traditional workflow for pre-processing data. So in this pipeline, we want to do some pre-processing, we want to do some variant discovery and then we want to do some preliminary analyses. So if you have one sample, you might run it through each step. You might have a bash script that does this for you. You might send it to the cluster and have a bunch of different scripts doing the different steps for your bits of data. But the thing is, as I mentioned, right, this doesn't scale very well. And this is where workflow managers come in. So a workflow manager is a software tool that can help us automate and scale this really complex data processing and analysis. Workflow managers are really great for four reasons. Workflow managers allow you to execute tasks in a specific order, so they keep things in the correct order. Secondly, they're great at dependency management. So if one task depends on the output from another task, it kind of waits until all of its inputs are ready before it's executed. So it's really good at kind of managing these dependencies that different processes need to run. Also, workflow managers make the pipelines really reproducible and I've touched on how important this is before, but if you've got a reproducible pipeline, it means that it's really easy to repeat the analysis, it's easy to log what's happened, it's just very good for being a good bioinformatician. And fourthly, scalability. Your pipelines can scale and deal with huge data sets if 
they're wrapped in workflow managers. So I bang on about Nextflow, but Nextflow isn't the only workflow manager available to you. So just so you're aware, there's three kind of main ones that I've come across in my time in the field. So we have Nextflow, we have Snakemake, and we have Woodle. Or Woodle? Woodle. Woodle? So I'm just going to describe these briefly and then we'll get into getting started with Nextflow. Snakemake uses a language that is kind of Python based. It's primarily designed for being deployed on local systems and cluster compute systems and can be used in the cloud. But Snakemake's really targeted a kind of beginner entry level workflow managers. The syntax is really nice. This is the kind of target market for Snakemake. I've seen it used more in kind of academic settings for smaller projects, but I haven't seen it used in more larger institutes as the main manager. So just bear that in mind. Secondly, we have Nextflow. So Nextflow is a Groovy-like syntax. And if you don't know Groovy, Groovy is a kind of Java-like language. It's used for QPath and image analysis. And the, the most important thing about Nextflow is it's a highly portable workflow manager uh, running on local clusters and cloud with just a few clicks of a button or changes in parameters it's really easy to port it across these different platforms again making your pipeline easier to share and easier to scale the main focus of Nextflow is having really efficient parallelization. And then finally, there is also Woodle or WDL, which stands for Workflow Description Language. And this is a language that is kind of JSON based and it's primarily used in genomics. And it's often used for execution along with Cromwell, mainly in the cloud computing environment. So not too much of something that we need to be aware of for our entry level bioinformatics jobs. Hopefully you've got an idea of the fact that we have this huge amounts of data now in bioinformatics. So you can't just solve things ad hoc. You need to build pipelines to process your data through. And it's not just good enough having a pipeline. You need to wrap that in a workflow manager that can then manage the execution of all the tasks that are occurring in your pipeline with all the different samples that are coming into your pipeline. So with that done, let's now dive into Nextflow itself. So Nextflow is my favorite workflow manager, not least because it's the only one I know how to code in. But if you look at all the job descriptions, they're all asking for Nextflow programming skills. And that's because everything is kind of transitioning over to Nextflow now. I've seen it before where even pipelines that were done in Woodle before are now being converted into Nextflow. It's just the workflow manager of choice at the moment. So I really, really highly recommend choosing this one over any of the others, even Snakemake. And that's because if more kind of core facilities in research institutes are using Nextflow, then there's more people to learn from and help you out when you build yours. And also you're more employable when you go for your job than you're going for and you've got the Nextflow skills. So if you head on over to Nextflow's website, this is where you are gonna find all the resources to learn Nextflow. You can see that they've got a training section. So if you head on over to the training section on their website, you'll either find the fundamentals training or the advanced training. So if you're super new to Nextflow, head on over to the fundamentals and get started right there. When you head on over to the introduction page, you can see that there's already a YouTube video out by Nextflow with the foundation training. So I'd recommend, I'll link it down below, but go ahead and watch that video too. They also mentioned about the Slack channel. So Nextflow have a Slack community and you should definitely go ahead and join that, introduce yourself and you'll see that on there, there's loads of discussions and loads of people ready to help you out with your Nextflow pipeline. So make sure you join their Slack channel. The Nextflow fundamentals training is really helpful to get an overall idea of what Nextflow is doing and what it's kind of adding to your pipeline that you've written anyway. So a really important thing to note is all of your work that you've done, writing scripts to do things, isn't wasted because Nextflow just wraps up the things that you've done already. So Nextflow can use your script to then put into its workflow manager. So don't worry, all is not lost. 
I'll let you guys go through the tutorial in your own space, but I'll just recap over a few key points about Nextflow to hopefully make it make a little bit more sense. One of the key components about Nextflow is this idea of processes and channels. And this is a really core component about the workflow manager in Nextflow. Essentially, the kind of building blocks of your pipeline are termed processes. So a process is like a chunk of something that you wanna do. And then channels kind of are things that stream the data between your different processes. So say you've got some data, it might come into an input channel, go into process A, and then it would be output by process A, go through another channel, and then into process B. And what's really cool is if you've got one, two, three, or three million samples, you can all send them through your pipeline and they'll go into the process and then once they finish being doing their little thing, they'll be output into the next channel and then when the next process is ready to receive that data and that channel is filled up, that process can then be executed. So hopefully you can see the idea of this kind of dependency management because if you chunk up your kind of jobs into these processes, as soon as all of the inputs might be ready for one process, it can run straight away. And that's the really beautiful thing about Nextflow. You might have written something in this really long order and it might take ages to get to process M, but if all of process M's inputs were actually generated earlier on in your workflow, process M can run as soon as its inputs are ready. So that's a really, really epic thing about Nextflow, but try and familiarise yourself with this concept of having processes and having channels. What's really good is inside your processes, you can either write in the Groovy syntax or you can write in a bash script or you can write in a Python script and use whatever coding language you're familiar with. So that's really helpful about Nextflow. Another key point about Nextflow is this idea of the resume flag. So if you've got a really long pipeline with maybe 20 different processes and it falls over at process 19 because there was a bug in your code, you don't have to start right from the beginning. You can run the pipeline with a dash resume, also known as the resume flag, and your pipeline will just resume from where it left off, which honestly, this is so much better than running things locally and then they fall over and you have to start right from the beginning. Nextflow completely removes this and chef's kiss. In addition to this other, you know, dash resume flag, you can also set a bunch of parameters. So when you run your Nextflow on the command line, you can enter in parameters that you might want to update in your pipeline. So maybe you have a certain reference genome and you can have that as a parameter, change it when you run it, um, whatever you might need to have as a parameter, you can do that within the Nextflow system. The next thing to be aware of in Nextflow is this idea of workflows. So I mentioned that you have processes that are these kind of bioinformatics tasks that you want to execute. You then have your channels where the data moves between each process. And then there's also this concept of workflows. So basically a workflow is a bunch of processes. So instead of having, well, say you have 20 processes, you might want to kind of bunch them up into separate workflows. And the reason why this is really amazing is because you can then kind of run alternative workflows using your same setup. So you might have four different workflows, they might use many different processes, and then the user kind of has that option to run workflow A or run workflow B. So really good for kind of customizing and not having to reproduce work because each workflow can just call from whatever process you've asked it to call from. The other thing about Nextflow is all of the different processes that happen get spawned off as these different little work jobs and then you can go into the work directory within Nextflow and have a look at the outputs and the scripts of each different task and this is really helpful for debugging purposes because you can see what went wrong. And again, this is how Nextflow knows how to dash resume and pick up where it left off from because all of the previous work has been stored in cache. So it's really helpful for this. And then finally, the main thing about Nextflow in terms of reproducibility and like portability is this ability 
all the other T's, is this ability to kind of containerize your different processes. So I've talked about containers before, but Nextflow has a really nice way of for every process that you run, so every kind of biomatic bubble of work you want to do, you can very easily just say what container you want to use to run that process and then it means that each process has its own container and you know that it's going to be able to run with all of the specific requirements that that code needs. Also there's a really easy way to have a parameter file and you can change the executor with just one line of code to say if you want to run it locally on your machine, run it on the cloud or run it on a compute cluster. So I hope that's given you a little introduction as to what Nextflow is and why you might need it. So I definitely recommend heading over to their website, looking at the tutorials, joining the NF Core Slack channel, and then also go ahead on the Nextflow website and just look at the NF Core pipelines. So NF Core is this kind of community driven group of people who develop these kind of approved best practice Nextflow workflows and if anything they're just a great place to start when you want to understand oh I want to analyze some RNA-seq single cell data how do you do that you can just go and look on the NF core pipelines and if there's one there you can see the nice workflows of what to do I'll just wrap up this video as well by mentioning that Developing a Nextflow is a really good skill to have, but at the bare minimum, just being able to run a Nextflow pipeline, understand the outputs, being able to change the parameters and know how to work a Nextflow pipeline is a great place to start. So definitely make sure that you try and download an NF Core pipeline, try and run it yourself, maybe tweak some parameters, etc., and just see Nextflow in action on your machine running something. For now, thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys on another one. Bye!